Hey everybody, my name is Darren Saul from Suspended Animation. I'm a social media and podcast strategist. I'm very excited to be on the online prosperity show with Prosper, who I'm going to be speaking all about my favorite topics, social media content, podcasting, answering some questions, and giving you some insights and strategies of what I've learned over the last few years living in the trenches of social media. So hopefully you're going to join us soon and hopefully you enjoy the episode. Now, welcome to yet another exciting episode of the Online Prosperity Show. And today I've brought you none other than Dara. Darren, the serial podcaster, strategist, trainer, and coach. How are you doing today, sir? Ah, oh, sensational prosper. What a great welcome. I love the energy. It's just beautiful. Fantastic. It's good not to see you. I mean, it's good to see you now, not on LinkedIn, because I feel like you constantly <laughs> are living on LinkedIn this day, right? Yeah, I am. Like I'm more and more now. LinkedIn has become my main LinkedIn is like my coffee shop. Instead of going to the coffee shop, I go to LinkedIn. Absolutely. And we've been connecting over there. And then yes, we decided to have this chat today. Now, obviously. Yeah. Uh, for those that are listening, Darren is a serial podcaster, strategist, trainer, coach. He's also a keynote speaker and a student of human attention. Now, it is through attention that you actually, um, you know, get paid, especially in the market uh, we live in these days. And if your social media game is on point, then obviously, once you get that attention, you can turn that attention into um, assets that you can then be paid for, um, you know, for a long time. Now, he's also utilizing um, the power of podcasting to build his photography business and was also amazed with the results that he has never looked back from that. And I believe we've been on your podcast, um, yes. Darren. Fantastic. You have. You, you, Pod, Prosper was on my podcast. I can't remember the episode, but it was a very successful episode. Everybody loved our chat and it was a pleasure to have you on the show. Great stuff. Now it's your turn to return the favor. And <laughs> if people don't like this episode, then we know the reason why, right? <laughs> Fantastic. Now, Darren, tell us a little bit about yourself and how you actually got started. Sure. Wow. So, um, we were just chatting a bit before. I mean, I I do lots of different things, but marketing has always been a passion of mine. And more so over the last few years, I realized that marketing is so powerful. And if you don't get accustomed to using the marketing channels and tools and platforms that we have nowadays at our disposal, you will not get the success that you're looking for. Um, so I started, I've been a recruiter, an IT recruiter for many, many years. And I've also done a lot of photography work. And then I realized at a certain point that I have to start utilizing social media and podcasting as a marketing tool, as a marketing platform, marketing channel, marketing strategy to be able to get hack into the attention, build trust, build credibility, bring out, bring leads to my business and just keep in touch with uh, all my customers and all my contacts. And it's just been an incredible journey. I've learned all the time it's a constant you know phase of growth because the technology keeps changing but it's as long as you embrace that and it's you can have a lot of fun you can collaborate with amazing people like prosper and um you know the, the results are definitely there if you put in the work absolutely and kudos to you i mean there's a lot of people that try and dabble into this content space and then they just become one click wonders Oh, they just show up once and then that's just um, about it. How have you managed to maintain, um, basically you're juggling all these jobs and you're also managing to be consistent with your content. And obviously there's more, more to, um, you know, more life that happens behind the scenes. How have you managed to actually be consistent with your um, content production then? Yeah, what a great question. I mean, I dedicate, I'm very structured in my approach to work. And so I dedicate a certain amount of time every morning, usually very early in the morning because I'm an early riser and I dedicate that time for marketing. So in the first hour or two of the day, I am working on my marketing campaigns, working on my, on my uh, uh, content. 
putting together videos, uh, posting things up on social media, different social media channels, promoting um, podcasts, all that kind of stuff. I, I'm very strict in, my, in the way that I do things. And then throughout the day, I might jump on and jump off. But the other key to this is having a very organized strategy for your content. And what I like to do is I have a, um, you know, a reservoir of content that I constantly draw from and I itemize and, and segregate that really well. I have videos, I have cartoons, I have pictures, I have all my written content all segregated in different areas. And then when I get up in the morning, I can say, okay, what do I feel like doing today? I'm going to do some video and I'm going to put it together with some text or I'm going to do some podcast work or I'm going to um, put, get some screenshots and I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. And it's everything there at my fingertips. So it's like, I always say, it's like cooking. You know, you, you have all the ingredients in front of you and then you say, what am I going to make today? And you can make many things out of the same ingredients, but that's where the creativity comes in. And that's where the inspiration comes in of how you feel when you do it. So I'm very organized, but I do have a reservoir of content that I'm always maintaining and adding to when I get inspired throughout the day. And I keep that with me at all, at all times. It's almost like my, my little, um, little thoughts of the day I put in, into, my, into those documents. And then when I sit down to, to do content, it's all there ready for me to, to play, to draw from. Absolutely. And I appreciate that uh, response. Now, Darren, all I'm hearing from what you're saying is little habits that you do from the time you wake up to, you know, making sure that you're consistent with your, uh, with your content and everything else. And also then just being consistent uh, with the work that you do. How important is it to really um, have these cumulative habits uh, and follow through with them uh, and, and how has that changed your, your life a, as a whole? Because some people oh, can't wake up early in the morning. Like yeah, Great I mean, stuff. <laughs> I never used to be a morning person, but with the demands of, the, of modern world and modern life, I started thinking, oh my God, I've got so much to do. I've, got, I've started getting up earlier and earlier and it became a passion for me and I actually really enjoy it and I look forward to it. But that's where, that's where my day starts. And I also do that because... When I'm up at five o'clock, 5.30 in the morning for the first couple of hours, I'm not disturbed. I'm the most fresh and I have no disruptions. And that's when I can dedicate to being creative. So I choose that time on purpose um, because it's, it's quiet. But I love, you know, what you asked me about habits. I think habits are so important. You know, you have to have, you have to build habits and systems into everything you do day to day. Otherwise you will not execute them for more than a day or two, as you say, you become a one post wonder, you know, that doesn't give you any results. You know, this is a game of longevity. It's a game of consistency. And the only way you're going to execute to that effect is to build good habits and stick to them and enjoy them and start to enjoy them, learn to, to enjoy them. And you learn to really embrace that consistency. And you'll really, you'll, you'll be amazed at what you can actually create. Absolutely. So, you know, somebody might be listening here and saying, okay, I'm looking at his microphone. He looks like a professional. Um, I don't have a radio voice like uh, the one Darren has, and I can't sound as good on my podcast. Uh, what sort of, yeah. <laughs> what sort of advice could you give to somebody who's already having those thoughts in their head? And also you did mention at the start that you do photography. So that means you'd be really good at your uh, social media posts. And somebody's just looking at themselves and thinking, I don't have any of those skills. Yeah, man, you, you, you can do whatever it is that you need to do. Everybody has a certain flair. Some people might have a flair for writing. Some people might have a flair for photography. Some people might have a flair for video. Some people might have a flair for voice. I mean, you don't have to do it all, but you do have to try and execute on your strengths, find out what you like to do, what you think you'll be good at, what you'd like to develop further, and just start going down that path and deciding. And it kind of just takes its own, um, takes its own momentum. Um, you start to create things, you start to go off in tangents, you start to enjoy it. And these days there are some amazing tools like Canva. I use all the time, and I'm sure you do, 
it's such an amazing tool and you can do anything on Canva. You can, it's almost like you're, you have a graphic designer's toolkit in front of you. You don't even need to spend big money and it's really easy to use. It's drag and drop. So you can create screenshots, photos, banners, um, podcast um, thumbnails, YouTube thumbnail, everything on Canva. Such a great tool. C-A-N-V-A, -A, Canva. It's an Australian company and it's just an absolute godsend when it comes to content. Absolutely. And if you're wondering how Darren pays for um, these expensive microphones, it's endorsing uh, companies like Canva. <laughs> That's, right. That's right. I'm not, I'm not sponsored by Canva, but you know, maybe they'll call me one day. <laughs> Absolutely. Fantastic. O obviously, this is, this is very interesting because there are tools out there that a lot of people can utilize and that don't have a big learning curve. I mean, if you know the difference between colors, you definitely can use Canva. And I really, I'm going to use the title for this uh, podcast. Um, it's all going to be created from Canva there. Now, okay. knowing what you know now, you know, what, what do you see a lot of people uh, doing wrong, especially in the social media space there, um, while they think they're actually uh, killing it? Yeah, good question. I mean, I'm even, I'm constantly reflecting and analyzing my own results and re-strategizing because now the market has become more saturated on social media. That's not, it's nothing new. So you almost have to continue to try to find a way to stand out um, and be different from everybody else. And so I'm constantly reframing and rejuggling my own strategy. And so what I'm doing now is I'm just trying to be, I kind of like break it down into three points. One is consistency, which we've talked, which we've spoken about. The second one is quality. And I don't mean quality in terms of um, graphic quality or production quality. When I say quality, I mean quality in terms of, is it valuable for people is other messages is the content of value to people is it something useful rather than just pure promotion that's really important and the third point is variety so variety can be good once you get into the hang of it and you start to get more developed with your content strategy it is nice to kind of come at, at things from a different angle each time so people don't get bored so i get up in the morning and i i do some written posts then i do some graphic stuff then i might throw up a podcast video then i might do some a screenshot so i'm trying to come at people from many different angles so they never get bored it's like a, a buffet of content but i'm trying to make it of value so every time i sit down to put out a piece of content i'm thinking what's in it for them not what do i get out of it you know what is in it for them if prosper is going to read this is he going to get something out of this or is it just darren you know uh, peacocking and blowing his own trumpet all the time you know so that's really important is how can you educate the market how can you educate your audience give them information give them entertainment give them insights give them a, th a thought-provoking quote anything but something that's just not going to be this is what we do buy my product or which is what you see a lot of or i'm so proud i'm so excited to announce that we were chosen as number one in this particular category, you know, great. But I always think what's in it for them, you know, all those kind of messages are great in, in their own right. And certainly you can promote yourself a little bit and you should, but I always kind of find a 20, 80 ratio, 20% promotion, 80% value based content for the audience. If you can use that as a ratio, it's okay because 80% of the time people are getting stuff that they can use. And then every now and again, you might say, Oh, by the way, this is what I do. And they say, Oh, great. That's what he does. No problem. You know, it's, they almost forgive you or they welcome that as long as you don't abuse it. And that, and a lot of people do the exact opposite. It's 80, 20 instead of 20, 80. So I think that's a really good point to, to remember when you're producing content, give people quality, give people value, make, be consistent, give them variety, and really think about that ratio of 80% value, 20% promotion. That's really important in anything you do. Absolutely. You, you touch on very, very important aspects there. Obviously, the radio that anybody is always tuned in 
to is the what's in it for me, W-I-I-F-M. And that is something that wherever they're going, they're thinking about their health, their wealth, their relationships, and nothing to do with Darren Saul or Prosper Taruinga. I mean, they might think about me once in a while. I don't know about you, but it's, <laughs> it's one of those things that I also notice, especially on LinkedIn, which I think is a professional uh, profile. And my next question to you is, do you then have to appear in all these different platforms in different genres of yourself? Or how do you advise that people show up in these platforms? Yeah, that's a really good question. And again, that really just also boils down to time. How much time do you have? Like a lot of people, the greats would say, you, and it's true, you have to be contextual to the platform you're in. So every platform has a certain nuance and you have to be, you have to respect that nuance and maybe create in a little, in a slightly different way. Um, but it also depends on how much time you have. If you have limited time, I would say choose one or two platforms where you think your audience lives. And that's the most important thing. You have to make sure that you are accessing and targeting the right audience. So if you're, if you're, you know, business, like my recruitment business, most of the work that I do, or just about all the work that I do is always on LinkedIn because my target market is nowhere else. It's very concentrated and it's very connected on LinkedIn, but my photography business and my social media, I can start doing a lot of work on Instagram and Facebook. I can even go to TikTok. I don't, but I could. Uh, and also as well as LinkedIn, um, as well as YouTube, as well as my podcast channels. So you have to be thinking about where does your audience live? And then how much time do you have to actually create and execute on those platforms? And then just do what works for you. Um, you know, and it's never going to hurt you if you put something up on a platform that you've you put up on another platform and you haven't really changed it that much. But, um, you know, if you, when you get more strategic and more developed, then you can start finding the nuance within the platforms. But, you know, I really think it's about time as well, you know, because we don't have 20 hours a day to just be spending on all these things while we, we should be working. Taking selfies. Exactly. So, you know, you know, and marketing is important. Marketing is your business without marketing. You don't have a business but you still have to work in the business. So dedicate a certain amount of time to work on the business, on the marketing, in whichever platforms you choose, and then make sure you have enough time to actually do whatever you have to do for your customers. Absolutely. So there's one thing that I've come across with, um, especially I've seen it with your content. Your content is very engaging and it stops people from scrolling. And that's the reason why I engage and I think and I stop and I listen. And then I see how can I, how would I have said this either in the same way or in different words? If you've noticed, I try and, and see how I could have said that back. Yeah, now, and you do it really well as well. And you, you, you find things at a deeper meaning than I do. I say, wow, Prosper. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> Didn't even think of that when I wrote it. <laughs> Absolutely. Does, does that not take up much of your time um, when people start engaging? Because you're now creating all this really good content and obviously it, it doesn't need to take up your time to actually do work that matters. Um, like I jump on, I just jump on and off really quickly or, you know, a few times a day, you can even also be very structured and jump on two or three times a day for five, 10 minutes, answer all the, answer all the uh, comments, you know, do what you have to do and then get back to your, your, your work, you know, cause you know, I, I really want to stress that it is an important part of your day. Marketing is a very important part of your day but you can't let it take over your day as well. So if, as long as you're quite structured around it and you're disciplined around it, you know, it, it can be very, very um, satisfying, very, very rewarding. You can have a lot of fun. It can bring you a lot of great results, but you've got to make sure that you don't get lost in that, in that ether and then it takes you away from everything else you're doing. So being structured and being clever in how you manage your time is really important. Absolutely. Does that not um, also, you know, take away from um you know your 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 message when people just go on a tangent and you now try and have to quench their fires or things things of that nature um depends i suppose like like i might not if i don't have the time to really go into lengthy discussions i'll just put a comment or two or just have a quick read and acknowledge the fact that someone's actually made a comment because that's the most important thing 
to acknowledge that someone's even actually said something. You know, that's a big thing. If someone's engaging with your content, you don't ignore them. And if you don't have a lot of time, you just, at the very least, say thanks, great comment, or like the comment, or put a heart, or put a thank you sign, or whatever, just to say, I've heard you. Thank you. I appreciate you in my audience. I appreciate you connecting. And then if you have a bit of time later on, you can come back or next time you can further develop thoughts. You know, you know, it's really just about managing your time again. Absolutely. And you did mention tools earlier on. And I'm just thinking one of the things that you help people with is podcasting. And one of the biggest bars to entry in the podcasting space is the tools or the equipment or the technical aspect that um, goes around with podcasting. What is, yep. what is your take on that? Or what is your advice that you normally give to people um, you know, that are looking to get started with podcasting? Yeah, great. I mean, in the old days, podcasting was much more time consuming and much more expensive because you had to have a studio, you had to have a sound engineer, you had to have a videographer, you had to do a lot of work behind the scenes. But now with the birth of a lot of these great applications and devices and systems and, you know, the, um, what's the word, the maturity of digital, you can do everything so easily and do what we're doing right now on Zoom without even leaving your desk. And you know, these microphones, you can buy these microphones for $100. You can have all your setup, a couple of lights, whatever. And you can really have a whole studio set up for a couple of hundred dollars and using platforms that are free or next to nothing. And if you really want to spend a bit of money, then, you know, even for a, a good price, you can get other people to edit things for you and post produce things for you. You know, you can go to places like uh, Upwork and Fiverr and all these amazing Airtasker and all these amazing um, collaborating uh, spaces where people can do a lot of this work for you at a very low cost. So podcasting now is a very low barrier in, to entry. Um, and that's why you see a lot of people podcasting. But the key to podcasting is, again, it has, you have to have a strategy around it. You have to have a preparation strategy and you have to have a promotion strategy. And you have to have, um, you know, really put in the time to work with your guest, to develop and prepare the episode and build a whole structure around what you do. So everything that you do has to be strategic and then you can get a lot of success out of your podcast. And your podcast is a very important tool in your social media marketing content. Absolutely. Because we are obviously going to have to be educating our audience, like what you said, in order for them to know, like, and trust who we are. And we also have to be reaching out to new audiences that haven't quite heard us. And I think you can leverage your voice and, um, you know, those audiences using your podcast. What's been the biggest highlight now that you're a podcast junkie? What's been your biggest <laughs> highlight, um, you know, with this whole podcasting frontier, which uh, still seems, which from what you say is becoming easier, but it still seems like, an, you know, an explored territory for a lot of people. Yeah, a couple of things, I suppose. I mean, the first thing is I find it really a really great creative outlet. It's so much fun to, you know, start delving into the different technology and you're starting to process things in a different way and thinking about how you can put in little interludes or um, openings or closings to your podcast, um, how you promote your podcast with different screenshots and things on Canva. So the creative aspect and the, the learning that you get out of sound, you understand sound, you understand lighting, and I can see my lighting's even getting a bit brighter, so I'm going to turn it down. So all these little things kind of are um, very creative and a lot of fun, but also meeting a lot of great people. Um, I've met so many great people. I've interviewed so many great people. I've learned so much um, by proxy, just organically, through a lot of great people that are really experts in their field. And, um, and every now and again, if someone asks me to do a a little seminar or a workshop on podcasting that kind of gives me a bit of a buzz because I say, wow, that's, you know, I've managed to create some kind of credibility in what I do. So, you know, it, it never ends. It's evolving constantly. And it's just fun to be in that space in the digital world with all the people and you meet people from all over the world as well. And you just have a lot of fun. Absolutely. I, and I really appreciate that you've taken me, me on your podcast and also now we are reciprocating 
um, you know, all of that. Now, what other strategies have you got, um, you know, that you can maybe, um, you know, help our audience with in order for them to really amplify their message in the marketplace? Yeah. So, I mean, like for me, it really boils down to content. You have to really try and take the time to learn and play with content, developing content in as many forms as you can, as many forms as you feel comfortable with and start putting that content out there. Don't worry if it's not perfect. It doesn't have to be perfect. This is not Hollywood. It's not, uh, you know, a blockbuster film. It's just, you know, a guy, a guy or girl next door putting out some thoughts, putting out some insights into their personality, into, into their work philosophy, and people will connect with that. And it's just amazing how powerful it is. And I can honestly say to you that I've got some amazing business opportunities by being very consistent with putting out content every single day. Even when I wake up in the morning, I think, ah, oh, I couldn't be bothered. I'm tired. I don't know what to do. I say, no, sit, have my coffee, sit down and say, all right, even if I just put two or three things out, I will have to, I have to do it because I made a promise that I will do this every single day. And, you know, of course you have a day off here and there if you need to, but be consistent and just start the process. That's the key, I think. Just start. Fantastic. Now, Darren, if somebody's, you know, obviously sitting at the edge of their chair watching this video <laughs> and they're eager to press some buttons so they can get connected to you, what's the best way that people <laughs> can get started with um, a journey with you? Oh, sensational. Well, uh, everything's on my website. Just go to suspendedanimation.com.au. From there, you can link to all my social handles, my YouTube channel, my podcast channels everything so everything's there and uh, if you want to give me a call 0414 659 800 um, and all the details are on the website as well so only too happy to chat to anybody who's wanting to dive into this space absolutely now i just want to have a fun question with you which basically a lot of people um you know find very fascinating of all the platforms that you're on which one do you hate the most oh good question and why? <laughs> I won't say hate, but I don't use Instagram that much. And the reason is I find it a little bit limiting because I can't attach, um, you know, I can't put links in. I can't, I can't do much with it. It's just a picture and it's quite one dimensional. So I find it a little limiting um, compared to a lot of the other platforms. So I like Facebook. I like, Inst I like uh, LinkedIn. I like YouTube, I like podcast channels. Um, Instagram just is a little bit more limiting. So I, I'm a little, I'm on it a bit less these days. Absolutely. So we need to redefine the statement that a picture says a thousand words, right? Because obviously yeah. those pictures are not saying the right words at the right time. Yeah, 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 yeah. You're right. I mean, and they do a picture say a thousand words, but sometimes you want to actually add some more stuff and you can't do it. <laughs> so that's what I find it a bit limiting. Fantastic. Oh my God. This has been so fantastic. And if you're watching this right now, you can understand and you can conclude that your content is a foundation of your digital marketing strategy. And without it, you're going to struggle to attract the attention um, that you need, especially to collect leads and convert them into paying customers. And when you create great pieces of content, however, you are going to be successful. And as you can see from what Darren has mentioned, it makes your business profitable and enjoyable. Now, Darren, I can't thank you enough for you taking your time and, um, you know, sharing your insights with us today. Uh, my pleasure, Prosper. And I might just leave everybody with one more little insight, because I think it's really important when we're talking about content and social media is a lot of people might be listening and they might be thinking, all right, great, let's put out content and I get one like, two likes, next week I get five likes, but it's not, I'm not getting enough traction. And the one thing that a lot of people think or neglect is that social media really is about two parts. One part content and the other part is building your audience. If you don't build your audience, you have nothing for that content to land on. You have nothing, you have no, there's no, there's no leverage for that content. So I think it's really important for people to make sure that they build their audience on a daily basis, become self-aware, so aware that they're building their audience constantly. If I was speaking to Prosper now for the first time, 
I would straight away go back to my podcast, my LinkedIn channels and my Facebook channels and add him as a contact. I might also search for different people, you know, on LinkedIn, for example, because that you can really search for people with the, with the directory and people that you think might be, um, might be happy to receive some of your value messages and your value content, connect with them with a little message, you know, so you have to try and build up your audience at the same time as putting out content, because otherwise there's nowhere for your content to land. And I think people always forget about that. So I think really think about those two parts, they work together. Absolutely. There's a front end and a back end that needs to constantly be happening. And and I think you're doing both well. Your content is engaging and obviously you have an audience that is captivated. There's all, all a lot of people that are commenting and liking on your posts, which then means they go into more news feeds and obviously whatever you're doing um, is working. I really appreciate all these insights. And obviously if we keep you on any bit longer, I might just uh, receive an invoice from your people uh, <laughs> saying that we're taking up much of your time. So I really appreciate your time there, Darren. Uh, Prosper, thank you so much for having me on, man. I love talking to you. I love your energy. I love your passion. And, you know, you, I'm happy for you to come back on the show anytime because I'd love to continue the conversation. And uh, to all the audience out there, really appreciate you having me on as well. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Thanks, guys. Oh.